Some time ago I did a review of Nuke Ramp, how I play it and how I take the position. And it had pretty good success over at Launder's channel, we did it together. So now I decided to do one myself, the complete guide that I try to go over as many things as possible that are relevant to you as a ramp player to improve and to play well. Quick disclaimer before we go into the video, this was recorded just hours before CS2 officially came out. So bear with me and I'm sorry I couldn't get CS2 server to work, but all the concepts and things that I mentioned in this guide still apply to CS2. So no matter what version you play, you will learn a lot. So let's get straight into some in-game stuff. So how you want to start the round? Generally, I have four different starters that I like to use. Either you're starting with a using a Molotov, Second starter is using a smoke. Third one is where you don't throw any nades at all and you just play with the guns out. And fourth one is a little optional, but I like to do it whenever I face anti-force or anti-eco. And that's when I throw any nade that I like and then follow it up with an HE as well. This works really well on face it and any random pickup games and even some pro games because people on these rounds tend to rush ramp. All right, let's talk how to hold ramp. Well, luxury of being a ramp player is that your position is not a bomb side. You can easily give up ramp if you're in trouble and fall back down to B side. However, if you can get a kill before falling away, that would be considered a good halt. With M4, playing anything you are comfortable should be your go-to. But do not overuse same positions. Have at least three to five spots where you like to play and change them accordingly depending on the game. Having AK on ramp is incredibly powerful. We had a rule in my team that if we ever manage to get AK on CD side, we drop it to ramp player. You have a lot of headshot angles where you can abuse one shot kill from AK such as these. If you are forced away from ramp by flashes, let's say, there are again multiple headshot angles on B side where you can maximize your value of AK. Now let's try to move on low buys. So, Playing low buy is tough, but completely doable on ramp if you ask me, thanks to the nature of close range combat. You have multiple angles where shotgun or SMG are incredibly powerful like here. Or even insanely powerful pistols positions if you like to play deagle, you can copy some of your headshot angle positions as if you had an AK, or utilize 5.7 for example to your advantage. Well, many players don't know that 5.7 is actually one shot kill on close distance, so I always loved this position. Let's move on to opening. So this is one of the spots where secondary opening is really hard to deal with for T's. It's sometimes very hard to understand if CDs are having an open ramp in professional CS, but in matchmaking or face it games, you can tell that if CT is using early smoke or molotov on ramp and suddenly he stops doing so, you can assume he is opening. You can switch up style of opening easily by committing to your hold and play long distance angles to spot all the way to trophy room or you can opt for a more defensive play style which relies on getting an easy kill and rotating down to B. You are abusing the fact that trading on ramp is a nightmare for T's even in organized teams and top level. Let's move on to utility. So if you plan on playing with utility, there are a couple of ways to do it. Most of them are reactive plays where you play for certain info and use nades to block ramp. Most used position that CTs use would be spotting a pixel gap into radio and as soon as they spot an enemy, they drop a Molotov or smoke to create timing for rotation to arrive or for you to take favorable position. Let's talk playing 5v5. I will go over 5v5 scenarios and philosophy around what to do on ramp. A terrible round for ramp player is that he dies on ramp without killing anyone. You should know your limits and sometimes if you miss a first engagement, you have to swallow the ego and just rotate to B to have another chance of getting a kill if they commit to B. Sometimes you can go for multi kills, but you need to understand when is it worth it. Good rule of thumb is to attempt going for second kill if you manage to get a clean opening. I consider a clean opening as a kill within your first two to four bullets and without losing less than 20 HP. Another thing is not to repeat from same position to attempt second kill to make it the trading harder for approaching T's. If you manage to create 5v3 advantage for your team, leaving ramp should be your priority. You did your job and basically won a round. If T's chase you down and eventually trade you, 4v3 is still a solid scenario for CT side in most of the circumstances. 
Hey, this is a quick break. If you are liking this video, hitting that like button and letting me know what you think in the comments would really, really help. And if you learn something new, I hope you will consider subscribing as well. Thank you, but now let's talk about Nuke again. Now let's talk playing advantage. So the philosophy on ramp slightly changes when you are in advantage. Let's say your teammate made an entry kill outside and you play 5v4. Now you should avoid any risks such as pushing or using a lot of nades at timings where T's can catch you off guard. Now your full concentration should be on your aim. Getting the next kill can very much secure you a whole round if you survive the trade attempt. That is why you should again value your own life over getting a kill. Giving up a ram control while being a man up is completely okay and your team should know how to play these situations. There's also other side of the coin, so playing disadvantage. Now it gets a little bit tricky. Disadvantage of being man down in CS is huge and even more so on nuke. You have few options how to approach this and it is good that you cycle through these to be more unpredictable. One is to stay on ramp. If you decide to commit to your own position and hold, your values shifts. Now you should be more open in taking risks and therefore attempting multi-kills. Dying without a kill would make the round 3v5 and pretty much unable to win. Dying while killing only one is still massive advantage for T's as it is 3v4. It's a very hard position to be in but that's just CS. Playing disadvantages situations are always rough. Another option for you is to push ramp. This is option as well. Trying to seek a frag in radio or T-lobby on terrorist that is usually alone is viable play. Also getting a solid flank while A hit is happening can turn this push into round winning play especially in less coordinated CS on face it. However one tip would be to always let your teammates know you do this and preferably call one extra person to be ready to take over ramp in time. Let's say you push and get a nice one for one trade, the usual reaction of T's is to run ramp. If your teammate is already on ramp, thanks to you telling them to rotate, they can mop up an easy multi-kill to make the round equal again. Third option is to give up ramp. There are two ways to give up ramp. One is to rotate back under heaven and help outside or A side and second is to rotate down to secret. Both are fine and generally depends on where your teammate died and when you are needed. This is not a rocket science and it is very dependent on communication, so you have to be flexible with your decisions in this one. Option number four is stacking ramp and stacking ramp is an option that usually isn't translating too well into puck plays such as face it or matchmaking. Stacking ramp is pure gamble that can pay off but in my experience pushing ramp is more successful. Ramp stacks are only really seen in pro play if you have a specific read after analyzing your opponents. Let's say they love to end ramp whenever the oper dies outside or something like that. Let's talk about pushing ramp. In general, ramp pushes towards radio should be coordinated with your A players. Popular meta was and still is for many years to lobby crunch, where you push door, hut and ramp to punish T's during their default as there is usually only one or two players in the lobby. This is hard to pull off in a game with random teammates, but I want to share a solo play with you that has pretty good success on any level. And I think I saw JDC from Mouseports doing this long time ago. Basically this play consists of you just throwing a smoke into trophy room and then line up like this with a molly. You can, without moving your mouse, move all the way into the smoke and just release the molly. This molly covers whole radio and therefore it is very likely that it flushes the T's out of that spot and you just take a risk and push the smoke. And usually this was a really good success. I did it myself in pro games a lot and in facing and matchmaking is especially powerful. Let's talk about the rotation. Honestly, rotation as a ramp player is probably most difficult part of this spot, but only in pro play. This chapter can single-handedly filter good ramp players from the best. And to be honest, it is all about communication from your team and how well you listen. You rely on information from every single teammate on the server if you hold ramp. Outside player will obviously say what kind of smoke wall was used and whether they can cross the secret or wrap under heaven. A players will, at the beginning of the round, be responsible of blocking not only A rush, but also Venn dive. And sometimes it is hard to stop Venn dives, and if there is even slight chance of T's being downwind, your gameplay changes on ramp. All these factors play a role in big picture, and you have to catch all these information while you worry about doing your stuff, blocking ramp, focusing on aim, 
to win a duel. It can be overwhelming at times. The moment your outside player calls that Tease could be down Sigurd, it is usually main player that rotates down through vent. But in pro games, there are times where Tease molly the vent and he is unable to make it in time. That is where you become rotator instead of ramp player and your rotator takes over ramp. And now you have to take a lot of things into consideration. What smokes did T's use outside? How far down they can be in secret? Did they vent dive at the start of the round? All these questions lead you to an answer where you should play. Sometimes you don't even have time to open double door and try to hold secret. Then you are stuck on B side without much control. Sometimes you are able to position yourself around stairs and have solid headshot angles. Sometimes you can push secret all the way. Whatever you choose, you have a huge responsibility because if you misjudge your limit or timing and you die without killing anyone, the round becomes nearly impossible to win. In pro games, you see many ways how to deal with rotations. For example, when outside smokes are thrown, CDs like to molly secret. This is to create timing for ramp rotator to make it to good position without worrying of T's taking too much space. All this is pre-planned, but the amount of micro decisions you do as a rotator is absurd and one missed info or miscalculated risk can lose a round on the spot. I want to go over a few tips and tricks to remember. So as a CT ramp player, you want to play around T's opening and radio, dry peak or radio boost. Whenever you give up ramp, make sure to communicate to your team that T's could rep under heaven. If you feel like no one is reacting to it, Keep repeating the info until teammate fills that gap, if possible. Another thing I want to mention is that there is a gap in between the ramp boxes. So this position is extremely powerful now because even if T's decide to creep in and walk by you, you will now suddenly spot them. Now let's move to possibility of you improving your gameplay. So some players to watch, there are a couple of players who mastered their ways around holding ramp. Top 5 RAM players for me right now are JKS, Rops, Bit, Magisk and Snoppy. Rops is floating in many rounds, so if you want to improve your rotations towards Secret, he should teach you a thing or two. Bit and Magisk are in general very solid anchors with minimal mistakes and also sharp aim. The way they take duels around the whole ramp area should give you a guideline what fights are worth taking. Snappy and JKs are both methodical on ramp in their own way. Snappy is very good with utility and timings while JKs gets a lot of multi kills while surviving. And I hope that through this video I could explain you how in depth the professional counter strike is when it comes to understanding your spot. There is no correct way to play the game and by no means I said that this is video is perfect. Uh, the meta changes, new counters are discovered and you have to evolve with it but now you get to see how I think about Nuke and what goes on in my head while playing. If you enjoyed the video, I am pretty sure you will enjoy the next one that YouTube thinks you will like. And see you in that one. Bye bye.